What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Woke as Funk. This is your host, Maximilian Webster, and I am so excited to have you here. If you're here listening, that means you are here for some positive inspiration. You're looking to tap into your spirituality. You're interested in self-care, personal development, and conscious conversations around things that truly matter. So kick back, relax, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All right, everyone. So welcome back. Today we are here with my buddy Joshua Wilson. What's up, dude? How are we doing? Joshua Wilson is a shamanic healing breathwork coach, correct? Yes. That sounds okay. good to me. I was, like, <laughs> I was looking at your Facebook. I was going to say, how can I describe that in the best way? And that's what came forward. So thank you for joining <laughs> us today, brother. So excited to have you on an episode of Woke as Fuck. Um, yeah, I like so- the name. Thanks, man. Thanks. It came to me one day and I was like, that's it. That's the podcast. That's what it's going to (laughs) be. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. I would like you to share with us the experiences that led you up to your spiritual awakening and personal transformation journey and kind of how that all happened. Yeah, I don't know if this is cliche to say or not, but I feel like looking back on my life now, it's sort of like I've always been on this path because I've always been drawn spirituality space things. I remember like the TV shows, like when I was a kid, I used to watch Power Rangers and stuff. So it was always there, you know what I mean? But I feel like where my transformation journey kind of starts is when I was really young, I had a lot of uh, physical health issues that most people don't get until they're like in their older ages. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I had a lot of like digestive issues and like psoriasis and eczema and skin stuff going on. And um I would go to the doctors and whatnot and they would be like, Oh, we don't really know what this is. Uh, just take this pill, just take this cream, just do this, just do that. It'll go away. Mm-hmm. And obviously in my opinion, Western medicine is not good for like chronic health things. So it never worked. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and when I was probably about 12 or 13, that's when I started kind of like realizing like, okay, I'm going to do something to fix this. Cause I need to do something to fix this because this sucks and no doctors have helped me. So I came across a a blog at that time. The blog was called Mark's Daily Apple and it's actually still a blog. It's still a cool thing. Um, This dude, Mark Sisson, he kind of is in like the paleo diet camp, but he has this whole thing called the primal blueprint. So I started learning a lot about that and like how grains and just like learning a lot about the science uh, of nutrition and like how, we need to eat real food from nature and not from factories and whatnot. So I started to clean up my diet a little bit since in that like 12 or 13. And I started to see a lot of benefit in my energy and in my body and whatnot. And that's kind of where my journey started. And then I started to get more into like working out and being healthy and that sort of thing at a very young age, because I sort of had to. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I was also trying to find my purpose and trying to like discover my dream and live my dream life. And at that time, looking back now, I can see it was a lot of like, I feel like whenever we start looking for our dream, it's always like we first have to go through the journey of uh, <laughs> looking for a dream based on what society and what the outside world has told us because mm-hmm. that's what's programmed into us. So I was like, I'm going to be a famous musician and I'm going to have all this money and all this fame and all this success and that's just going to make me happy. So I, at the time I was also really into like heavy metal because my brother introduced that to me. And I feel like uh, with like the emotional trauma that I was carrying, it kind of reflected that back to me. So it was like a safe energy almost. Mm -hmm. And so I got, and I'm not knocking heavy metal. I still love metal, but Mm -hmm. I started to get a lot into that. And um, I started practicing vocals in my room and, I would just like, like that teen angst, you know, I would just like go in my room and yell it out and just like, fuck you, mom, fuck you, dad, that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I got into that. And then I had a little stint with this one band at one time. And that was fun, but that ended shortly. And then when I was about 16, 17, um, I started a band with my friends and that band was called Distinguisher. And we ended up practicing a lot and playing local shows. And it happened really quick, like within six months of us doing our first practice and recording our, and making our first song we went on our first tour so that was really fun and that's when i first got the taste of like freedom and 
like kind of being on my own and like doing my own thing. Even though I was 17 and we weren't really making any money, we were touring in my mom's car and <laughs> we took my mom's car and it smelled for so long after that. But uh, that was a lot of fun. And then for the, for about four years after that, we started to tour a lot. And that's when I started to really have a lot of time to like, at the time I wasn't really meditating a lot. Um, but like being on the road and like being quiet in the van and like being free and like on the out in the world was like a lot of time for me to be present. And I always felt like I was always running to find, like I was so excited to go on tour, but now looking back, I realized what I was actually looking for and what I was actually excited about that tour gave me was freedom and uh, presence ultimately being fully in the present moment. So at around like year Th two or three like maybe two and a half three we were like gaining some good success we were every show we played was pretty much like we had like a hundred or so people there because metal's not a huge huge thing it's not pop music so it's not like we're playing in front of millions but uh we were playing in front of a lot of people for the size of a band we were and i remember we were playing this one show in dallas texas and it was like a really good show there was lots of people there everyone loved us and all this and i just remember having this feeling like that's the first time i really became aware of sort of like the the depression and the anxiety that I was carrying around because I feel like I was trying to run away from that for a long time and trying to run towards success and money and recognition and fans and all that stuff. So I was on stage and I remember just like having this deep sadness and depression come over me. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I don't know these people. They don't know me really. They just see this this they see Josh from Distinguisher and that's who I am I'm, I've just become this 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 not commodity but I've become this ego I've become this identity and that's who people interface with and that's who, that was kind of like my whole life I realized I started to wake up to the fact that I was just this identity I wasn't like it wasn't fulfilling it wasn't deep for me you know mm -hmm. and that started to open me up and I was like well what the fuck am I supposed to do then why am I doing this why am I doing that and uh then what really catapulted my spiritual awakening journey is actually back in Dallas, uh, probably a little bit after that, probably a couple tours after that one. Um, it was a Friday night in Dallas and uh, I took mushrooms for the first time. And that was a really powerful experience. We were in the van and I just like, we listened to music and had mushrooms. And I think I took like an eighth. So it was a pretty good dose for my first time. And it was just like the craziest experience. And that's when I really opened up and saw like, how reality is this quantum universe that we're in and like things are it's hard to explain a mushroom experience i'm sure you know <laughs> <laughs> but it was really powerful and i remember towards the end of it i was like listening to this one song and i was like laying in the van and i had my head right next to the speaker and i felt this huge weight this like anxious weight that i had been carrying around literally like lift off of my chest this huge weight and then after the trip i like stood up and I felt my chest was clear and open and I was like having this proud posture and I just felt mm. clear and open and amazing. And I was like, holy fuck, wow. this is like, what, what just happened? And then I remember like the whole drive home from that tour, I was just like sitting in the seat and like <laughs> one of the, one of the guys in my band, he's like, dude, you're super woke. You, you went super deep. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just remember I was just like, I, I feel like, before that I started to like build sort of like a spiritual ego and that's what was like my spirituality. It was very shallow. And mm -hmm. then like, I feel like the mushroom experience like showed me like 80, 90% of where I would have been living consciously was like unexplored. And I was like, Holy shit. So then that's when I started to really take the spiritual growth and the personal development and the healing more seriously. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's when I started meditating a lot and doing that sort of thing. And actually I want to share a little bit about the breath work. Cause that's a big part of how I help people and how I help myself as well. Um, in between all of that, like this all happened in that four year period of touring. Um, I noticed that when I would get on stage, I would like run out of breath to be able to do my lines and I wouldn't have enough energy to be energized and have, my be able to do everything I needed to do on stage. So I was like, how do I work on this breath control thing? And then I started looking at vocal videos. And then eventually I came across a man named Wim Hof, who I love that man so much. He's the founder of the Wim Hof method. It's like breath work and cold exposure and some other things. 
So I started to practice this breath work. I remember I found a Joe Rogan podcast with him and I practiced it and I was like, this is wild. Like I felt like my head got lightheaded and I felt like really good and amazing. And I was like hooked at that point after the first couple of times of me doing it. So I started to practice that like before I would go on stage because I would get like stage fright and anxiety and whatnot. So it helped me like kind of clear through all that stuff and like come on stage in a confident manner. I was able to do my parts and have all the energy I needed to talk to the crowd and do my music and whatnot. So it was like, it kind of started as like me helping myself in the band and whatnot. And then, like I said, after that mushroom experience, uh, and then also a couple of LSD experiences after that, I started really focusing on my personal growth. And that's when I started watching a lot more YouTube. And then I came across this one guy and he was like living in, I think it was like Thailand or something. And he was like a internet entrepreneur. And I had no idea what that was at the time. I was like, holy shit, this dude just makes passive income online and does whatever the fuck he wants. And he's free. I was like, that's exactly what I want to do. But I was still really holding on to the identity uh, and the life that I had in this band. And it took me about a year or so to really like start diving more into the meditation and the breath work. And I was just really going on my growth and my healing and whatnot. And at that time, it was like the life I was living in the band started to become more and more dissonant. And the touring started to become more and more stressful to my physical, mental, emotional, spiritual bodies. And uh, cause you don't sleep a lot, you don't eat good food. It's a lot of stress to tour, at least in, a, in the way I did it. Um, so I noticed the dissonance happening more and more and more. And like, there were so many signs from the universe, like to like, get the fuck out of there. Like we flipped our van at one point and then we drove through a tornado and we had like so many vans break down. And looking back now, I realized it was the universe being like, Hey, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> and, um, and then it didn't come. I didn't fully leave the band until <sighs> it was probably like August ish of uh, 2018 when uh so it was not that long ago uh we got a record contract at the time and it was like this great record contract and all that but i just felt it in my gut that this is not going to work for me and i'm not going to do this and it was like two weeks of anxiety and worry and like holy shit what do i do and then eventually i had this really deep powerful connection in the gym actually and i felt this white light come down and this like presence from above and it wasn't like a voice but it was just this energy that basically told me like you're going to be okay. Take this jump. This is your path. This is where you need to go. It's everything's going to work out better than you can even imagine right now. So it's like, all right, I'm, I'm in it. So I called the band up, I quit and it was really abrupt, really crazy. And then I just left and then I was like, Oh my God, I'm so free. And then at that point, that was like the band and that, that timeline that I was on was kind of like keeping a lot of my emotional trauma within me. So then after I quit the band, it was just me kind of in my, in my room by myself doing breath work and healing. And that's when I started diving even deeper into myself. And I had all these emotions come out. I started doing a lot of purging with the breath work and the healing and the guided meditations I was doing. And uh, yeah, that was sort of my first taste at like real deep shamanic healing. Cause I like had all these emotions coming up. At one point I looked at myself and I was like, holy shit, do I have cancer? Cause like the touring was just so horrible on my body. And then eventually, um, and then around that time, I also started diving more into YouTube because I, like I said, I found that dude on YouTube and I was like, this is something I want to do. This sounds awesome. And then I started working with a business coach and diving more into that. And then in January of 2019, I had my first opportunity to sit with ayahuasca, which is like a shamanic plant medicine and mushrooms and LSD had served me up until that point. And I still love those medicines, but this was my first chance to really dive in to like an actual ceremony with trained shamans and this like plant medicine from the jungle. So I did that and that was like totally, absolutely transformative for me. I healed a lot, I opened a lot, I realized a lot. And I started to get these visions that I'm here to like help people. I'm here to like help people heal themselves. And like the way that I've been doing it for so long, I was like, I've been journaling, I've been healing, I've been working on myself. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So that sort of built and built and built and more ayahuasca after that and the dark night of the soul after that, I just really got clear that I, I, it was a lot of like pulling away from my ego and really stepping more into my soul and using my ego as like a, as a vehicle for my divinity rather than an identity. And 
it just kind of like built after that, like realizing I'm going to be doing YouTube and I'm going to be healing people with breath work. And I also got the message in ayahuasca that I'm going to be working a lot more with the plant medicines and becoming a medicine man, a medicine man over time. And it kind of just all built after I quit the band. And it was just really beautiful how that all kind of came together. Wow. It sounds like from everything you said, you had this natural curiosity at a young age, you know, questioning the universe, questioning yourself and through your own trauma and depression and anxiety and searching for meaning, it kind of catapulted you into natural healing, psychedelics, self-awareness, and discovering your own personal identity, which led you to more fulfillment, clarity, and your desires. So my next question was, what, after you did this whole thing with yourself, what led you to really feel like you want to facilitate this process for others? Um, it wasn't like, it didn't really start building until my mentor that I shared that I did the business coaching with, I started helping him out at his, uh, retreats that he did in Sedona. Um, I would come and he, um, he, he does Kundalini yoga. So he would like lead Kundalini yoga. And I would also do that with him and like lead breath work with him. And I remember like the first, uh, retreat I did with him, we were in the, we were in a, uh, what was it? A hotel room before the retreat. And I was doing a lot of breath work for my morning routine. And he's like, dude, you breathe better than I do. You need to help people with this. And that was kind of like my first, like, huh, maybe I can do this. So that kind of just like, that was like the seed and it started to plant and then helping people with breath work at the retreats and doing more videos on breath work and doing more content around that and doing more inner exploration. I started to realize like, I do have a powerful um, gift to be able to heal with the breath. And like, I have this intuitive natural sense for healing because I've done it with myself so much and I realized like a big thing I see in the world that is like kind of like a big problem I see in the world I guess you could say is like we're as a society and I feel like we're waking up at a expansive rate now but we have been so disconnected from spirit and our higher selves and and the truth and like the creator so I've done my own work to get to a certain point within my spiritual awakening to where I realized that that has been the biggest um, catapult for my growth and my healing and my happiness and fulfillment. So I realized this is something that I can share with people because I've cl metaphorically climbed that mountain already. So I realized that the more I, especially a big thing that helped was like, the more I filmed YouTube videos, the more I realized that it's not me filming the videos. It's not me coming up with the ideas. It's just channeling through me, you know? So I realized that I'm this vessel for this healing and this divine light. So I can really stay in this humble place and I can allow spirit and source energy to come through me and help awaken others and help them remember themselves, you know? Yeah, I love that. I love that. So Going back to this uh, metaphorical mountain that you climbed, what are some of the struggles that you had when stepping into your own uh, personal empowerment and facilitating others and how did you overcome them? The biggest thing for me as of uh, a big part since I uh, left the band and whatnot was a lot of like healing my trauma around my childhood, especially with my father, because uh so I didn't have a father, like my actual, actual father um, left before I was born. So I've never met him. Um, and then when I was really young, I was raised primarily by my mom and my grandma and my Nana. So a lot of feminine energy. And, uh, and it's, it's not, I'm not saying that as a bad thing, but that's just what it was. So I built a lot of feminine energy within myself. And then um, my mom married my dad, who is in my life now. And uh, he had his own emotional trauma that he was going through and carrying around. So that sort of just like would project out into me. And then I became afraid of him. And then I was like, oh, I'm not going to be aggressive. I'm not going to be angry because this has hurt me through this medium. And I'm not wanting to do that with other people. So it led me to not be as assertive and aggressive. And I say aggressive, meaning like being assertive, because I realized that's the energy we use to do things in the world and create as long as we come from a heart centered place, we can use that divine strength to um, enact change in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of my healing uh, to kind of find my own personal empowerment was stepping more into my masculine energy 
and mm -hmm. realizing that aggression and that, um, I say like killer instinct, because ultimately we are these primal beings as much as we are divine beings, you know? So mm -hmm. we have that capacity to hunt and to kill and to that energy of strength and power. So it was really kind of like doing lots of healing around like that energy. And instead of being afraid of it, finding that within myself and then realizing that is like a safe, protective, strong energy. And that's actually when I started to connect more with um, one of my power animals is wolf. I remember I had this one meditation on a full moon, uh, this one breath work ceremony. And um, I like connected with the wolf and I was like in the, in the, uh, in the, what is it? The mirror. And I was just like, had these, like, I, I felt like the wolf energy kind of coming through and I was like growling and snarling and like really breathing deep and like having this deep like growl going on. And I realized that was the first time I kind of stepped in and after lots of healing around that, that, that energy is safe, that energy is good. As long, it's like having um, the metaphor that co comes to mind is like when you have a sword in your sheath on your side and you know you can use it when you need to use it, but you don't use it because unless you have to or unless you need to, that's like the energy of empowerment in my experience. It's like um, one of the books and one of the mentors that I like, his name's Traver Bohm and his whole thing is like, uh, connecting the primal masculine with the divine masculine, creating like this new man in the world. And one of his tenets that he talks about is be dangerous, but not a danger. And that really resonates for this. It's like learning how to uh, exercise that dangerous part of ourselves, but not necessarily using that to harm others. Because when we don't exercise that dangerous part of ourselves, or we don't um, own our anger. We don't own our aggression. We don't use our assertiveness in the world. It builds up within us and it comes into our shadow. And then it comes, that's how we hurt people is if we don't own those parts of ourselves and we act like we're not aggressive, we're not angry, we're not these um, strong beings, then that will build up and then it'll come out in your relationships and your family and in passive aggressive ways and whatnot. So for me, it's been a lot about like, owning that within myself and realizing that I'm strong and powerful and then mm. not needing to show that to like, like once you know that it's like a lion, a lion doesn't walk around overly boasting his pride and his strength. He just knows he is that, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I so love that's that. been a big thing for me. Awesome, man. So I hear that you're really working on strengthening your relationship with the divine trying to find your way to balance that here in the physical realm not allowing your ego to take completely over but allowing your ego to help be the driving force that helps you navigate the world and and show up for others in a powerful way so my next question for you is what are your hopes that you're working with this kind of energy doing this kind of work on yourself and doing this with your clients how do you see this this, these changes on an individual level impacting the world at large? So the first thing that comes to mind is within my own transformation and my own healing journey, I've realized how much of an impact me connecting to my higher self and having that divine connection and doing my own healing work and living on intuition and faith has not only uh, impacted me in a positive way, but it's also helped me to impact my family and my friends and my loved ones in a positive way. Because I realized like when we're in this energy of divinity and connection, um, when you go around other people, it just, it's like, I remember listening to a podcast from one of my mentors, Paul check. And he was talking about like, they did studies where the, the more you heal yourself, the larger your aura becomes. And like uh, a decently, I'm not saying like totally healed because I don't believe in being totally healed. There's always more work to do. But like when you have done a lot of healing work, your aura can extend 30 feet in either direction. So just going out into the world with that energy, even if you're not talking to people, if even, even if you're just walking through the store and you just happen to pass through all these, pass by all these different people, your presence and your energy that you're carrying, that light that you are being with, naturally heals others and naturally aligns others. I like to think of it as like a singing bowl almost. Like the more you heal yourself, the more you become this human. And the metaphor is like you become like a singing bowl. And that singing bowl, we all know when you sit with a singing bowl, it really aligns you and balances you and grounds you and makes you feel centered with your light. So it's like the more you heal yourself and the more you align your energy and your vibration with your divine purpose and your higher self, 
they'll naturally you just become healthier and happier and more fulfilled and more balanced. And then that energy, just being around other people, it, it, it allows them to tune to that. It's almost like you're this light and then being around other people, whether that be talking to people, coaching people, working with clients, or just being next to someone, you naturally just have allow, give them time and, and, and the opportunity to tune to that to themselves. And then uh, to share about working with clients, I feel like obviously we can all do this work on our own, but it takes a lot of dedication and hard work to be able to do that on your own. And I found a lot of benefit in working with plant medicine, especially with other coaches, because mm -hmm. when you have someone that's climbed that mountain already and they know every, all the pitfalls, they know how to get there really easily and quickly. Mm -hmm. When you work with someone like that, it absolutely catapults your own growth because yeah. they become that, light in an even deeper way because they're working with you one on one they're talking to you they are uh, opening up as you open up to really help uh help you see and gain awareness on your inner world and what would be the best next step for you and it really allows people to catapult their own growth and their own awakening and their own healing and uh yeah i really um feel called to like with my clients do that work because it's helped me a lot. And I realized that um, for those that are willing and ready to take the call and do their own healing work and really dive in on a deeper level, working with a coach one-on-one -on -one can catapult that in an amazing way. And like what I was sharing, like the more healing you do, the more you become this balanced light for others to tune to. Mm -hmm. I feel like, um, what was the question again? <laughs> no, you're, you're on it. It's uh, how do you see these individual uh, changes impacting the world at large? Yeah, oh, I mean, so yeah, I you're... feel like working with my clients um, and like sh having them climb their own mountain because I've climbed my own mountain mm -hmm. thus far, what I've done, um, they will be able to get to that more awakened, balanced, healthful, fulfilled place within their own lives and in their own inner alignment to where mm -hmm. then they can become this really bright light for themselves. And then maybe that inspires them to become a coach of their own or to start their own YouTube channel or to be their own leader. And ultimately, I guess I feel like the people I work with are, have this really strong light, like we all do. And mm -hmm. the more healing you do, the more you gain that power back, the more they will feel called to that, that service, whether that be through creating art or actually helping people like a coach or whatnot. So I really see it helping people step into their truth and their divinity to be able to share that with others on a massive scale. It's kind of like a a trickling down effect, you know what I mean? Just like, mm -hmm. cre like, like a tree, if you will. Yeah, I love that so much. It sounds like from, you know, going through your own healing experience and your own empowerment journey, realizing that you're doing a service to the world by undergoing that process. And I almost get the, the image that comes to mind is like, when you have the candle and you light another candle and that candle lights another candle, it's like that, that chain reaction that comes about by you stepping into your own divinity your own divinity and something that excites me about that is i can my vision for the future is really spreading this conscious awareness spreading the knowledge of our divinity onto each and every person on the planet so that when we have these new children coming into the world we're not teaching them to doubt themselves we're not teaching them to um stifling their own light we're teaching them their divinity and ultimately i see uh, on a massive world global scale being able to have children that are are confident and they can bring more of their light bring more of their soul into this world and see what that i mean just imagining what that change on a global level is that that just excites me so much so oh me too and one more thing i feel called to share is uh for those of you guys who are listening you've maybe heard this before maybe this is the first time you're hearing it but a thing that I've discovered in my own experience is with the notion and the understanding that we're all connected on this uh, quantum level, on this unseen level, every time you do healing work and you do this sacred work of healing yourself and connecting with the divinity, that sends a signal through the unseen into the unconscious of the collective. So the more mm -hmm. you heal, exactly. the more you're sending that energy into the collective Mm -hmm. And then they, without even talking to them or even being around that person, you're helping other people heal themselves, even exactly. people across the globe through totally. quantum entanglement. Totally, totally. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, it reminds me of this. I think 
this, there's some researcher or some scientist that did a experiment where they were trying to teach some monkeys something and they the the different pockets of monkeys around the world didn't know how to do this but they taught this to one particular group of monkeys and s for some reason after they taught them that monkeys all over the world started to pick up on that almost psychically and were able to to perform this skill and i think it's like on a metaphysical level you you hit the nail on the head there it's like by us contributing our own work and raising our own individual vibration we're we're sending like you said that signal out to the universe and allowing other people to have permission to step more into their awakening process and i i think that's really what's happening on the globe right now i every day i see more people starting to ask questions about themselves about reality seeing angel numbers um having profound dreams and awakening experiences on a on a it's like a, a, a quickening of the awakening process and I, I attribute that to over the years just one person at a time stepping into their power stepping into their light and and doing really what their soul was called to do um in this earth yeah exactly i i see that as well and i think it's beautiful it's like we have so many people on the planet now and maybe looking at it on like a demographic scale, maybe it's a minority of people who have really awakened to a certain level and become um, healed and integrated and connected in their own way. But mm -hmm. that has been enough to start tipping the scales and yes. like sending that out to the masses. Yes. The hundredth monkey effect. Oh yeah. That's where that comes from. That's what's oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The, I was like, okay. That, okay. Come full circle. All right. Last one. If you could <laughs> shout a message, if you could shout one message from the rooftops for the whole world to hear, what would it be? I would get up on top of the roof and just yell to people like, remember who you are. Like mm. the biggest insight that I've had in my life that has transformed everything, literally everything in my life is remember who you are. We are not these human beings. We are not these human avatars with no power and no ability to do things except for what we do in our egoic doings. Um, we are source energy. We are spiritual beings. We are eternal souls that mm. have decided to incarnate into this human experience and experience what it's like to be human. But once you start understanding that and really realizing that within your own life and when i say realize i don't mean like listen to this podcast and then like in your head be like okay i'm a spiritual being it has to it has to get into your bones it has to get into your energy and it has to be who you are you have to know that on a, a being level with everything you are because when you feel that and you show up in the world in that way and you know you are source energy and you are this divine undying essence then that transforms everything you're doing because you're no longer um, you're no longer reacting to things in your, in your world, in your, in your human experience. You're no longer um, seeing things and then taking them at face value and then getting reactive, or you're no longer seeing things and taking them for what they are and then using the mind to create everything. Because the more you awaken to this truth, the more you connect to the higher mind and the more you realize that the higher mind is ultimately what is pulling the strings on this planet. Like, well, the more you can surrender and the more you can realize this truth, the more you can be and the more you can have this natural state of peace and fulfillment and balance and abundance and love and health and everything because you realize that you don't necessarily have to do anything. Like this is something I've learned from the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, the, the Tao, the way. The Tao and the way, obviously, it's you can't really share it in words. Everyone has to realize it for themselves. But if I were to share that and help people sort of like look in a certain direction, it's about when you get into the way and you get into this truth, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to plan out everything. You don't have to do all these things and try to hold on with your ego so much because when you surrender to this truth of your source energy, you can let that come through you and then everything just happens. Like for me, an example of this is I used to plan out all my YouTube videos and all the content that I would prepare and all of this. And I would like stress over it and think about it too much and all that. I don't even plan out my YouTube videos anymore. I get in front of the camera, I sit there and meditate and then I get an insight or an intuition from source that says, this is what we're talking about today. This is what the collective needs here. I click play and then I just start flowing with it because mm. it's not us doing it. You know what I mean? It's this energy that's coming through us. That's doing everything in our lives. And it's like when you can, learn that and live from that you can 
only act from that place of inspiration and intuition, that will start to reflect in your inner world, in your outer world, and in everything that you do. Wow. Woo. Thanks for taking us to church, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me, brother. Yeah, brother. Thank you so much for sharing your story. And I really appreciate this conversation. It's really near and dear to my heart, as you know. And uh, I'm sure if the people listening ha have come this far, they've gotten something out of it and were able to take some, some tidbits from this talk and really be able to have a shift in awareness in their life. So once again, you guys, thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. I hope the, thank you guys so much. Yeah, I hope the material here helps you on your journey to becoming happy, healthy, and wealthy awakened leaders. I will go ahead and include uh, Joshua's links to work with him in the description below. But if there's anything you'd like to say before we go, Josh, go ahead. Yeah, so you guys can connect with me on YouTube and Instagram. On YouTube, I do a lot of like deeper talks, kind of like what we're doing here. I do breathwork meditations on there. And then on Instagram, I share little tidbits of wisdom and insights and breathwork and whatnot. And uh, a recent thing that I want to share that I just opened up is uh, this program called Human Being Reset. And it's essentially this three month coaching program where we work, where I work with you guys one on one every single week. We do breathwork, we do healing work, we connect to our souls. We, uh, a big part of it is also like the holistic health and the physical side of things. So like getting clear on what your body needs to eat, what your body needs to drink, water wise, um, sleeping properly, really being able to take care of yourself properly and heal yourself so you can do that for the rest of your life. And that's a new program that I recently opened up. So if you guys feel called to that, I would love to talk to you about that. Awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. All right, you guys, we will see you next time.